<laughs> this is a brutal effect of human civilization on a landscape. It's the hardcore end of science. It's almost heartbreaking to see a landscape left in this condition. Distances to travel through, harsh terrain in, in harsh weather to carry out measurement and monitoring to, to tell us what we need for the future. We don't see sphagnum coming back naturally. Where we plant it, it thrives. It's science with, with, with boots and heavy winter clothing on. We could see ourselves as being on the front line of the fight against climate change. So my work at Morse for the Future is on the science team and, and some days that means looking at the data that I've collected and some days that means that my job is going for a walk in one of the best places in the country. So we're just arriving at the Bear Peak control site here and this is the edge of it. So in 2011 and the helicopter came up and applied lime seed and fertiliser on this side. Um, and not on this side. And this is the line where they stopped so that we could keep our Bear Peak control site to compare what happens for the treated sites to what would have happened if we hadn't done any treatment. This is what the South Pennines were like until the restoration work started to happen. This is what South Pennines would still be like if we hadn't done the restoration work. For me it does feel like a lunar landscape. It's very, it's just black and grey from the mineral. Lots of erosion, poor water quality, uh, very low wildlife, um, high acidity. But when you're here it is a bit like, oof, this, this is a brutal effect of human civilization on a landscape. So I come here every two weeks um, and that's partly to maintain the equipment that we've got here um, and, and to do the downloads, make sure we're not losing any data um, and also I have to dig out all of the sediment that builds up in here. Well this, this is all carbon which should be locked into the ground and in actual fact because there's no vegetation layer over it it's really vulnerable to erosion from the elements, wind and rain. But what is clear is that, you know, there is a very large volume of carbon um, which is eroding off um, degraded peatlands and being released into the atmosphere. Yeah, so I can see from the download that I've just done from this logger that the, um, the rain event earlier this morning brought the level up by about four centimetres. But we'll see how it's come through at the other sites over there. So when people say, where do you work? I'm like, well, I spend probably more time looking at a computer screen than out here, but this is, this is where my mind is all of the time. When I'm looking at the numbers on the screen, I'm sort of seeing this landscape and just trying to sort of, you know, delve inside the peat and work out what's going on, get inside the streams and working out why they're flowing differently and how they're flowing differently. So we're arriving at the first of our two treatment sites over here. In 2011, all of this would have been bare peat, just like at the bare peat control site. Um, you can see now, since the revegetation work in 2011, we've got a really good cover of grasses, mosses, and moorland shrubs. So you look at the impacts that that has on um, the hydrology and uh, biodiversity and vegetation cover. So sphagnum, which we've got growing on the sides of the stream here, is one of the, the key peatland species. It's known as the bog builder. It's pretty much a miracle plant. It captures carbon from the atmosphere and puts it into the ground so it fights climate change. It stores a lot of water so it keeps the peat wet and reduces wildfire. And it is a really rough surface holding a lot of water so it reduces flood severity. It also is an amazing filter, so we're hoping that we're going to see big improvements to water quality as a result of it. 
and it also provides a little microclimate with a lot of moisture which helps um, you know micro invertebrates and insects to breed and thrive up here which then feeds you know the food chain up to big raptors and other birds of prey and things um, we don't see sphagnum coming back naturally it, it just doesn't come back where we actively plant it it thrives and the measurement that I've just taken here is lower than at the Bear Peak control site. So it, it could mean that the storm here this morning was sufficiently small that the sphagnum has meant that there was very little response at all in this catchment. And that's what the data are showing so far. But what we're hoping is that in the biggest storm events, it's going to spread out the flow of water over a longer period of time. The sites look different, so at the Bear Peak control site we can see extensive Bear Peak. It's eroded right down to the mineral in some places. Um, at the treatment sites, it's thick with vegetation, we've got a really thick moss layer, and especially where we've planted the sphagnum, that's looking really healthy, it's really vibrant green, it's holding a lot of moisture even on quite a warm July day. That's when we really start seeing the benefits of the work that we've done here, and some of it really is quite astonishing, you know, when we look at the, the rate of reduction of erosion, that's 99% within two years. So that's, you know, a really outstanding achievement. No one expected it to be that, that stark. And when we look at storm flow, again, you know, the, the, the changes over the years are, you know, they're really significant. Um, so we know that we're having a positive impact. Same with water table. You can see that the water tables are rising as a result of restoration. So that, that's what gives me the motivation to carry on doing the job. And that's, you know, that's, that's why we carry on doing the restoration work that we're doing, because we know that it's working. We can see ourselves as being on the front line of the fight against climate change, stopping the, the climatic changes that we're seeing, which really are unprecedented. Um, so every contribution, whether that's from a volunteer coming out planting sphagnum or donating to planting a sphagnum, uh, restoration work itself or being involved in the science that evidences it, it's, it's all part of that same direction of travel to you know, turning a, a negative story, which these malls were, into a positive story, which they are becoming. Thank you.